with the gas prices in California, he dumped his travel flask and filled it with 93 octane to bring home Adam Corolla! Thanks, you guys. Appreciate you uh, coming out tonight. Uh, I'm enjoying your, your fare to Midland City. <laughs> I just came up with that joke. It's funny, right? <laughs> you usually say fair city, but let's put a Midland in there, you know. Although, you know, gas 360, 370, I just saw. So, uh, last tank I bought was in Malibu, California. <laughs> where it was like, it's, it's knocking on the door of uh, seven bucks a gallon in uh, LA. But that's all right. Uh, the same house you buy here for 375K is 2.7 million and, uh, in Los Angeles. So we, we make it up on the housing in taxes. We pay nothing in taxes. Um, I'm, a, I'm at a hotel, I don't know the name of it, but I'll, t I'll tell you who's uh, also in the hotel. Evidently, tonight, there's some big amateur MMA fight that's going on at the armory or something. And the only thing scarier than MMA guys are amateur MMA guys. I don't know why. Doesn't work that way in accounting, you know what I mean? Like, the only thing scarier than an accountant is an amateur accountant. No, but... The am these are all amateur MMA guys, and they got fucking nothing to lose. <laughs> and this is the first time I went to a gym in a hotel for like three years because they've been closed. You guys, do you guys do this when you travel? Like when you go up and you go to a hotel and you go uh, Get, talk to the person behind the counter and like, is there a gym here? And you go, please don't let there be a gym because <laughs> here's the deal. From where I'm standing, I can see the bar. <laughs> the gym is a mystery, but just pray to God or maybe some COVID. Well, with COVID, sorry, Sarah. And you're like, fuck yeah, I'm, I'll see you at the bar. <laughs> the fucking gym was open. The gym's open. I got nothing to do all day today, so there's no excuse. So I go in there, and I run into the amateur MMA guys that are beaked up for their fight. So they're just, like, walking, talking to themselves, and throwing punches into the air. And they all have their phones cranked up, and they're playing, like, guar. And they're just fucking like, doing all that shit with the rando tattoos. And then the one guy... One guy I started talking to who was, you know, never going back to prison again, so, he's, <laughs> so he says, that guy's got the big gauge earring hoops in his earlobes, and I'm like, how does that work in the octagon? Because you can't go in there with the gauge hoops stuffed in your ear, but on the other hand, when you, once you pop them out, that just be, that's like putting a handle on both sides of your head. Like, your forehead, your freaking head becomes luggage at that point. I just grab it and start driving my knee into it, right? Does anyone here have those big gauge hoop things? I, I, uh, I've said it before, but I'll, I'll say it again. I told my son, if that's what you want to do, I'm not going to stop you. If you want to get the big gauge hoop thing in your earlobe and keep stretching it out, go ahead. I'm not going to tell you not to do it. But as soon as that hoop gets big enough for me to fit my dick through it, <laughs> I'm coming for you. And I don't care if I'm meeting your girlfriend for first Thanksgiving, whatever. Uh, I'm coming up behind you like in the Pink Panther with, uh, what's his name? What, Kato. I'll drop down from the fucking ceiling and put my dick through your ear. I don't care. It's coming. So think about it. Want to go Harrison Ford with a sensible stud? That'll be fine. Although once you take the stud out, I still think I could make it. I haven't checked in a while, but if I got to run and start, yeah, for sure. And I went to uh, 
So I, you know, so what happens when you come to these uh, fair to midland towns? <laughs> yeah. You essentially have all day just to like walk around, but you have nowhere to go, no one to see, no, no plan. So I just started walking around and uh, came about, uh, found a Dick's Sporting Goods, a huge, there's a huge two-story Dick's Sporting Goods. And I walked in and they have the old greeter guy. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? He's wearing a reflective vest for some reason. <laughs> And he's just standing there. He's a seven-year-old guy. He's like, hi, welcome to Dick's. Good to see you. Having a good day. All right. And I like walk, hey, how you doing? And then I got in the store and I started going, what the fuck happened to that guy? Like, what kind of life does this guy have where at 71, he ends up just standing by a door? He's just saying hi to people. I mean, look, uh, if it, you know, the economy turns to shit and it's time to uh, cut back on staffing. I'm guessing the guy who does nothing but say hi to people who walk into the store is going to be the first one to go over at Dick's. But he said hi, and I was like, oh, man. But then I started thinking about it. And then I was watching him when I was leaving. He was saying hi, and he was making small talk with everyone. That guy's got to be the happiest guy on the planet, right? He, all day, he just smiles and says hi, talks to kids, talks about how great life is. Where we're fucking walking around with a head full of horrible negative thoughts and staring at our feet and wondering what's going on in Ukraine. And he's just like, hi, how you doing? I, I got no thoughts in my head other than friendly. <laughs> so I went into uh, Dick's and I, uh, I bought gloves because we don't really use gloves in Los Angeles, but it's colder than shit <laughs> here. And we took uh, we and and we took a nice we took a nice walk to uh, Joe's Barbecue. You guys must yeah. eat there, right? I uh, I uh, we got the Z Man sandwich. Yeah. It's kind of kind of cool walking into a place, seeing nothing but pickup trucks outside and fat people inside. <laughs> Nine-year-old with a serious mullet, like serious. <laughs> So, uh, like a nine-year-old with a with a uh, Billy Ray Cyrus 1989 type serious mullet. We uh, na gnashed out on our uh, barbecue, and that was fucking awesome. And then uh, walked back out into the uh, into the cold again. I'm not. <clears throat> it was like I don't know 80 degrees when I left L.A. So I'm not I'm not used to this. But I did. I did figure out, it's like the key is the hands, right? Once the hands get cold, everything else feels like shit after that, right? So I essentially got the dick sporting goods gloves. And then uh, I also, I haven't been into a big time sporting goods store in a long time, but it's like they fucking got everything for these goddamn kids. I got so pissed off. I mean, you know, imagine owning, when you were a kid, could you imagine owning your own batting helmet? That would have been unthinkable. You would have been, the, I, I knew one kid who had a Rams helmet light. He had a lamp that had, went through a Rams helmet. He was by far the richest person I'd ever met in my life because he had a fucking plastic helmet with a light bulb stuck to it. It's like, oh man, look at that guy. He should sell that and retire. He'll never work again. But they got, they got everything over there. They got, they got the complete outfit for the uh, softball section. They got the baseball section over there. They got the fucking soccer. Ugh. Come on. <laughs> Expect more out of you, Kansas. <laughs> All right, let's see what else I wrote down. Oh, they also have, uh, as if life wasn't shaming enough, uh, they have buff mannequins now. Have you seen the jacked mannequins? It dicks. Uh, they do. They have because the the Rock has his whole section. Like that fucking guy doesn't have enough money. His entire section dedicated to him. <laughs> and the uh, the mannequins are jacked, and I don't like it <laughs> because my feeling formally in front of any other mannequin I've ever seen would be like, you know, if the shit went down, I could kick that mannequin's ass. I fucking know it. Look how skinny his arms are. Now there's big jacked mannequins, and I'm like, if the shit goes down, he's definitely fucking me in the ass. 
no way. No way I'm going to be a top with that mannequin. I mean, if it really comes to that. I, I pray to God it doesn't, but if it does, definitely grabbing my ankles with that mannequin. All right, should we get started with the O? Oh, before, just, just so you know, just, just for, for my pre-misery, if you guys can feel me, I want you to, wherever you are tomorrow, hungover at about 5.15 a.m., wherever you are, heat, maybe you got your socks on, you're in your bed, toasty, in your REM sleep, we have a 7 a.m. flight out. 7 a.m. flight, well, it's about, I don't know, 35, 45 minutes to the airport. There's a late show tonight. So we'll be getting out of here about 12.30 tonight. We'll be getting back to the hotel about 1 a.m. We're fixing, we got a rental car to return. So we're fixing to meet in the lobby about 5.10, 5.15. And oh, by the way, we're going to lose an hour. <laughs> going to lose an hour. So wherever you are, Keep in mind, at about 1.25, I'm going to close my eyes, and the last thing I'm going to think is, oh, fuck, my three and a half hours is now going to become two and a half goddamn hours. We're going to lose it tonight. <laughs> Just tonight. All right, shall we uh, bring up uh, Adam Ray and Bald Brian? And, oh, Gina Grad is coming out here. She's in person. That's right. I forgot about that. Gina has uh, brought things from her family home. What yeah, do you got, Gina? It's like a museum. I first have to say, it really feels like I'm bringing my college boyfriend home for the first time. <laughs> it's so fucking weird after seven years. Um, oh, it's Brian. Um, okay, so remember in the 80s when we didn't care about kids being able to see or breathe on Halloween? Mm -hmm. And we would just cover them in masks with like the yes. smallest slits you ever did see? Yes. Well, the grads didn't roll that way. Um, this was a few years maybe before that fad. This is how I got dressed for Halloween. We have a picture. Uh -huh. um, a very specific character. I was a Halloween owl. <laughs> and I found it. Wow. Fuck, don't, did your, don't your parents throw away anything? No? My, the first thing my mom says is, you can go to the basement, but be careful. <laughs> this shit is still inflated. Wow. <laughs> I'm how old? God, this has been damn near 27 years. There is 80s air inside yeah. of that inflatable owl head? Yeah, and I, I wanted to blow it up more, but I am not touching the fucking spigot on this thing. Mm. <laughs> Now it's probably got cocaine and AIDS That's all over exactly it. That's exactly right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. There is, I told you, my, my bed was set up. It was just as I had left it. Mm. Uh, we have all my Cabbage Patch kids. I almost brought her in, Shalisha Modette. Um, mm -hmm. But they're very valuable as, you know, let's pretend. You know how you collect cars? Because yes. they're an investment and they'll appreciate. That's what we thought about Cabbage Patch Kids. Yeah. No, Jimmy's cousin Sal went hard in like the mid-later 90s on Beanie Babies. He's like, this, this princess die Beanie Baby is going to pay for my kid's college education. Yes. yes. Now, imagine the grads who are a little cash-strapped in the 80s these Cabbage Patch Kids were north of $100. I wow. have 13 of them. Wow. Holy shit. They really did think this was an investment. So, Ball Brian, you're at home because you went to the studio and the power went out? Thankfully, Kaylin um, texted me moments before I left, uh, so I never left my house. I was about to. Uh, he said, power's out at the studio, you know, zoom in from home. I said, this works out well because I'm actually headed to, I was, going to be headed to friend of the show Rich Demiro's house afterwards and he's the tech guy so I'm here in his home studio with the professional lights oh, and it's uh, oh, nice. well. and Adam Ray where are you you're on the road right I'm in Salem Oregon the Vegas of the Northwest <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, said, said Adam you're ever. gonna be back at this club in July right so I just want to July 21st to the 23rd give a pause uh, for come you. out and see me and I'm pumped to come during the KC summertime, because last time I was there was wintertime, and if anyone knows anything about the KC weathermen or women, 
They love to uh, overhype the weather. They, I think a night before my first show, they were like, everybody stay indoors, get your bean burritos and your toilet paper, because it's going to be an Oreo cookie blizzard. It's going to fuck your wife and kill your family. This blizzard's coming. Yeah, it was, an, it was aggressive. It was one of those late night uh, weather, uh, weather channel shows. And it just overhyped what was going to happen. They were like, don't go outside unless you want to be face-fucked by an icicle. And I was like, Jesus Christ. And then guess what? The next day, 58 degrees and sunny. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, they do like July. to say, you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. <laughs> do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Adam, I know, uh, so you're, you're doing show, you're, you're actually going to be performing later on tonight, right, in Salem? Oh, yeah. I'm at the Infinity Room tonight in Salem, and uh, my dad uh, lives out here, so I always like to come out and, uh, you know, get, a, uh, get some shows going, visit with Pops. We've watched uh, uh, Naked and Afraid uh, mm. for the last six hours. Yeah. Because, um, uh, you know, for me, I like the adventure. My dad likes the naked butts and tits. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so everybody, it's a win. It's a win-win. Yeah, I know. They always do the naked and afraid. They always put them out in the, you know, uncharted wilderness. But really, they ought to drop them down in the middle of town. Like, uh, that, I would yeah. be more afraid more being in, uh, in the south side of Chicago yeah. completely naked during winter than yes. I would being up in the hinterlands. Yeah. You know what I mean? Naked and afraid, yeah, Times yeah. Square. Right. Yes. Yeah, I would yeah, watch the ever, shit out of that. Lived. You haven't lived until you've been buck naked on aisle 16 in a Walmart in Des Moines, Iowa at 11.45 right. at night. Yeah, and <laughs> naked and afraid, uh, it's fine, and then at some point the army ants get involved, yeah. and they're, they're stinging the shit yeah. out of the guy's sack, and it's, it's, it's un unpleasant. Yeah, and somebody always bails. That's the thing, too. They're going into this thing together. It's like one of those, you know, every good you know, uh, duo of all time has had to overcome adversity, you know, whether sure. it's Bert and Ernie, you know, fighting over cookies in the bed or, you know, uh, Melania and Donald fighting over, you know, who's going to put it in who, you know, like what, there's always just, everyone's just always had to kind of, you know, deal with challenges and the naked and afraid duos are truly coming from opposite ends of the spectrum. And then somebody always like a day in is just like, you know what? Fuck it. I ain't eating berries for the rest of my life. I got a, a Wagyu beef slider waiting at home yes. and a wife who loves to 69. And you're like, all right, man, get out of here. Well, don't you, first off, I don't know, in terms of the couple, somebody's got to pitch it to somebody in the couple. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't think I've ever been with a woman that I could pitch naked and afraid to them. Right. Could you imagine That's the honeymoon. that pitch? I can barely... I, I Look, I've never been with a woman where... Uh, I, I couldn't even pitch seeing the fucking Fast and Furious at the local movie house. I'd be like, fuck you, I'm not going anywhere. You're at high. Couldn't, I couldn't imagine the pitch, but... Is it the man that's pitching it to the woman? Is it the woman that's pitching it to the man? Do they hook them? Are they couples or do they hook up on the show, Adam? Well, I think, and this is a great question, and uh, I think that there's, you know, some instances where they're couples. Some of them are meeting on the show for the first time. You've got all different sorts of combos. It's a real grab, bra uh, grab bag, who's who of who gives a shit uh, mm -hmm. people where it's just like, all right, we've got David from Detroit, we've got Kelly from Burbank, and you know, she's a mother of four, you know, he's uh, got four DUIs, you know, and then they meet up and they try to survive, and then for whatever reason, sometimes opposites attract Paul Abdul style, and these guys get through it to the end together uh, for better. Uh, but then my favorite is when, again, they just, they come in with 25 years of marriage, and they're hoping that this is gonna be their save me uh, trip, like uh -huh. save the marriage vacay, where they're like, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't do it to, we, we, we fucked up little Bobby. He's, you know, he's, he's given hand jobs for tuna salad sandwiches under the 405. Maybe if we can get through the, 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 the step from where the wild things are together over a weekend with just nothing but our genitals and some cashews, then maybe, just maybe, we can save this marriage. 
I I feel <clears throat> if I participate in the, participated in the uh, Naked and Afraid show, I'd love to see it. <clears throat> Celebrity, I, Celebrity I, <laughs> it's me and Danny Bonaducci, you know. <laughs> We've, put, we've, cut, we've teamed up. <laughs> but I feel like I would have to make the speech to my female partner, played by yeah. uh, Gina Grad, like uh, like before the pants came off. It, it'd just be a lot of, you know, it's really cold up on this mountain. Oh, and I, yeah, no, I'm a little cold too. It's yeah, but too. no, but you, let me finish. It, it's... <laughs> It, it's 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 cold and and that affects a man in in, in ways that uh, can be kind of, kind of play tricks on the mind you know I so pick up what you're putting down let, you know, me, I, let me put you at ease this is my a judgment nipples come for, out too what's it you my what? nipples come out too when yeah it's no they, but this doesn't come out this <laughs> this is uh <clears throat> the, I mean the Indians call it Mount Pinos and and that's an Indian word right. for judgment free. I don't know if you know that. No, I didn't so know that. So this is kind of a judgment-free zone okay, here. Okay, sure. But it's, it's pretty cold. I, but I have goosebumps. It's nothing to be embarrassed If about. we can... Well, I'll have a goose bump, I guess just singular. <laughs> but if we can get this fire going tonight, yeah. I think you're going to, you know, see me really shine, you know? I think oh, it's a, I can't wait. Um, do, wait a second. Do you have a small dick? Well, uh, <clears throat> not... You know, okay. Some guys are <laughs> growers... And, and not showers. Right. And um, I, I, would, I would file myself under a, a grower, not a shower, but it's not harvesting season. You know what I mean? It's, it's oh. too cold to harvest up on this godforsaken mountain, all right? Okay. Um, is it too late to switch partners? No, no, no I, think, I think we'll be fine once I get around the fire. You know what uh, I mean? Okay. And I Everything do, looks bigger in the shadow of a fire. I do a kind of a fire dance. Okay. Which involves me tugging on my dick desperately <laughs> over I'm a burning be a rock. Producer. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm naked now. I know yeah. you couldn't tell. No, but this I, is I, I, quite a surprise. All right. So. Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. And yeah, then the, surprise. The voice sorry. Over comes in. And then the voiceover for the show comes in and goes, it's been 48 hours, and warmth is the biggest concern for Gina and Adam, although his tiny penis in the freezing cold has become the bigger concern. Will Gina be able to start a fire with nothing but a couple of twigs and his tiny penis in the way? We'll find out on an all-new Naked and Afraid. Yeah. Uh, Brian, you were saying... Yeah, speaking of desperately tugging on a penis, before we move off of uh, uh, Gina Grad's younger days, I would like to know how many, how many of Gina's boyfriends while in Kansas, college, high school, whatever, turned out to be gay? <laughs> Good well, question. There's a couple of people who could help me figure that out. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, wait, inside or outside of community theater? Oh, no, in the state of Kansas. Oh, shit. While you resided there. Okay. If I was never in theater, the answer would be a hard zero. Mm -hmm. Now, because I spent a lot of time at theater in the park, which uh, a lot of you may be familiar with, I would say conservatively four. Four. Yeah. <laughs> so you turned out four dudes. <laughs> Who would be home with their loving Impressive. wives and families right now had you not yeah. gotten If it wasn't them. for this fruit fly. <laughs> Hey, I, I know uh, Dr. Phil is with us uh, tonight. Let's see if you can uh, work that one out, uh, Dr. Phil. I'm told <laughs> you had the face-changing uh, technology, Dr. Phil. We got it, baby. All right. Let's see. Oh, my oh, God. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, it's, you know, it's my, my third time in Kansas City. Uh, my, my, my first time over Zoom. Okay, the first few times I was here, I was... Uh, Actually, a uh, uh, fucking uh, a weather girl uh, on uh, uh, my sabbatical. It was before I met Robin McGraw. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not a cheater unless it's uh, you know uh, in the food department. I like to keep a, a strict diet of no carbs during the week, and then strictly a, a chocolate cake. And, uh, and, and edible underwear on the weekends. Yeah, that's right, I, I bought the edible underwear, not for the sexual part, but for the, the tasty treat that you get uh, instead of that buttered popcorn they try to push you at the movie theater. We'll be right back. We'll keep it right here. <laughs> I think Phil McGraw is from Kansas or went to KU. 
Am I right about that? that yeah, I think he knows a lot about a, the neighborhood. Is that true, that Phil? Is a great, that is a great question. <laughs> if somebody wants to Google that shit, <laughs> <right there. laughs> Phil, I figured you would know better than anybody if you went to uh, KU. I mean, look, I've got a very, I've got, a, I've got one of those brains that compartmentalizes certain uh, pieces of information. Like, like you could ask me, like, look, if I need to tell you the plot of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2: Secret of the Ooze, no problem. I'll do it in 15 minutes. If you need me to cook you a Stouffer's lasagna without looking at the box, I'll do it. If you need me to show your daughter how to put in a tampon. Uh, I can't do that, but I will Google it and find out how and then do it. <laughs> All right, well, you want to play some uh, Rotten Tomatoes game, and maybe Dr. Phil can play along uh, with us. Well, that, that sounds fantastic. That's All what right. I want to do. All I want to do is have some fun. Who said that? Cheryl Crow, we'll be right back. Listen to the guy's noise. That's a high And the game makes their pits Guessing if it's rotten or fresh If they guess it exactly We'll get a bonus five It's the Rotten Tomatoes game You know how we do it Give me the Rotten Tomatoes game Now it's time to play it all right, well, St. Patty's Day is right about in the corner. And while we mostly use the day as an excuse to get wasted and forced dwarves uh -huh. to wear silly costumes, it's more traditionally yeah. a day to celebrate the luck of the Irish. So put on some green, grab a four-leaf clover, and see if you can find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. This week's theme, movies about luck. Mm. Interesting. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me up. say this. Uh, Dr. Phil, if you put your ball cap on backwards, you'll be even more Dr. Fillier. Dr. Felicious. There yeah. you go. Wow. That's producing. You just got 38% more Dr. <laughs> Philly. Yeah, you're, you're taking me back to my, uh, my, my seventh grade skateboard gang days when I used to uh, ride around Rancho Cucamonga around 2, 3 a.m. looking for hot dogs and loose girls. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry, Dawson. First up, we have the story of a young man who goes on a game show in an attempt to reconnect with his long-lost love. As luck would have it, the events of his life line up to... Uh, line up to point some line up to that point somehow provide him with the knowledge to answer every single question correctly. It's a true rags to riches story with everything you need to know right in the title, directed by Danny Boyle from 2008, Slumdog Millionaire. Oh, this was okay. a tough movie. They love this movie. Was it? The critics, right? Uh, Brian, there's an actual scene of them burning oh. the <laughs> eyes out of children. That does happen. However, that's, that's a real crowd pleaser. Yeah, that was a hilarious scene. It's a humorous romp. All right, well, I say uh, the critics love it. It was nominated. Did it win? I can't remember. I think it did. I think it won best, uh, what was it, best slump, best slum dog scene or best, best, uh, best burning the eyes of a child? I, I can't that one. You know, what was it? It won something. Yeah. All right, is everyone locked in? I guess. Yep. I say 93. The only piece of paper in this tech guy's office is his business card, so I said 86. <laughs> Rich DeMuro. That's right. Is that your alias when you stay at a La Quinta Inn, Brian? <laughs> oh, no, he's far more famous than me. Hey, Dr. Phil? Yeah. You, you, do you have a guess? Oh, that's right, the game. Sorry, I'm on a <laughs> lot of Dayquil and uh, Four Loco right now. Uh, <laughs> let's go with... Let's go with a, let's go with a high, I think this movie won, I'm going to say best documentary uh, or best, uh, best commentary by a couple of white guys uh, who wish they were black. I think it was a high 96. Yeah, 96. I can't say it's in the night. It was too depressing. I said 88. Slumdog Millionaire is certified fresh. Fuck yeah. At 91%. Ooh, all right, all right. How did you say? 93. Ooh, nice. And by the way, Dr. Phil went to high school in Overland Park, Kansas. Oh, yeah. Right. I knew it was something in a park. 
I knew, I knew it was something. It was something about over that land or, you know, under that bush. That's what she said. But it was near a park. All right, next up, if you ever make your way to Vegas, be sure to look around the table before you commit to sitting down. You may think you're on an unbelievable hot streak, but you never know if you're seated next to a cooler. Someone with such terrible luck, they'll bring the whole table down. That's the setup for this romantic dramedy about one unlucky man who might just have a real shot at love. The film stars lovable schmuck William H. Macy, along with Alec Baldwin, Ron Livingston, and Maria Bello from 2003, The Cooler. Was this good? Yeah, the thought? critics loved it, right, Brian? Let's find out. Oh, uh, Brian, yeah. don't ask no, they did. The no, critics. This is this is a, this is a good movie. Yeah, this is good. The critics liked it. I I never saw it. Let's ask the audience. Anybody see the cooler? Yes, good. We really like it, or we ironically like it. It's good. Oh no, it's, it's definitely a good movie. The poster is uh, definitely one of the sexier posters. This is just about during the time when kids started to whack it to cartoons and silhouettes. Mm. That's right. Hey, Baldwin was fantastic in this. Was he nominated for Best Supporting Actor? He might have been. I, he was great. There were definitely some nominations here. You guys locked in? Yeah. I say this was a uh, critical darling at 89. Oh, I'm right there with you, man. 88. I, I was going to go higher, but then Brian starts talking, and then it fucks with me up because he's always lying to us. I said 81. Ooh. Oh, shut up. Oh, all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and slide right in the middle. That's what he said, trying to play both sides. And um, I'm going to go ahead and go with a, a soft 86, which is my top speed I can hit in the batting cage at Dave & Buster's. <laughs> it's wildly specific. Now, Dr. Phil, I know this is your first time playing the game, but you must write down your score before all of them are announced. Dawson, I don't know if you heard the first part of my fucking uh, entry into the show, but I'm at a La Quinta Inn, and they do not provide you with proper pen and pad combinations. We don't even have breakfast. Thanks for rubbing it in, you cocksucker. Maybe if you put me up at a better spot, okay? I'm from Overland, Kansas Park. I'm, I'm, from, I'm, from, I'm from fucking... I'm from there, bitch. We'll be right back. We'll keep it right here. Let me get a pen real quick. All right, Dawson, don't agitate uh, the good doctor. He's my bad, my bad. I just didn't want him floating in between everyone after yeah. he finds out. No, I get scores. it. You got to regulate. Okay. The cooler is certified fresh at 77. Oh, wow. And the people at 69, I thought this was a critical darling. All right. We got, got the a game luck of the here. Kansas, man. All right. Dr. McCracken, right. we got you. <laughs> okay. Thank I you, Jim. So, wait. Phil McCracken. Yeah, you know, it's a little, <laughs> little so you want me to? Do I need to write it down or am I, can I Thank keep you. it? Can I just write it for the next one? Well, you should hear the description first, Phil. Great. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Dawson. All right. Next up. Cursed since childhood, a young dentist can't seem to find the right woman. And even worse, every one of his ex-girlfriends seems to find the man of their dreams immediately after breaking up with him. Oh, and good luck, Chuck! For oh. I've Charlie seen every Dave Cook movie Charlie. three times. Charlie, Charlie. But for his own sake, he must find a way to break the curse or risk losing the woman of his dreams to the next man she meets, Dane Cook and Jessica Alba star in 2007's Good Luck, Chuck. Yeah! Wow! I mean, yeah. how the fuck did he get this movie? Jesus Christ. Man, this wasn't available. This is... what. Listen. I am not easily offended by comedies. <laughs> I, I was offended by this movie. <laughs> because yeah. every... So, the premise of the movie is, is every time he slept with a woman, the next man she met she got married to okay so yeah you all, know that old tale yeah so all women want to get married according to this movie right. so at a certain point when the word got out there'd be a long line of women who just wanted to fuck chuck for one night and then they could go off and meet their dream man and, and be happily ever after so yeah, it, he was like the Apple store of penises, you know? Yeah. So essentially, Dane Cook is Pete Davidson. Right. <laughs> exactly. 
Wow, there hilarious. Go. Good call, Gina. Thank so you. at a certain point, he started to realize he was cursed with this right. thing, where everybody <laughs> he would be with would go on and get married with their next relationship. So he decided to put it to the test. And he thought, what if I fuck a fat chick? That way we can really She'll test this. never us. find love. <laughs> right. No fat chick. Well, no, no one wants to marry a fat chick, so I'll just fuck this fat chick, and then we'll see if the curse is true or not. And that's where that famous scene where he took her out to dinner. Oh, no. Okay. There's... I'm a curvy girl, a lot of curvy girls. It doesn't mean we're fucking grotesque. Well... That scene was vile. She was... So fat that she ordered 11 lobsters when they went out to dinner and she was eating through the shell. Yeah. She was eating. So stupid. <laughs> so Dane, and Dane was just drinking tequila out of the bottle and then he took her, took her home yeah. and reamed her that night. Yeah. And that's Fifteen why comedy. I was enamored with the, uh, with the movie. All right. The, the critics had to be disgusted Disgusted oh, yeah. at this movie. I mean, obviously it won Best Screenplay, but... Oh, I yeah. Well, Adapted Screenplay. Right, right, the right. book, Good Luck, yeah. Chuck, the novel. <laughs> from the stage Based play. on the novel push by Sapphire? Yes. <laughs> All a little, right. A little, Hollywood, a little Hollywood fun fact, uh, Adam. Yeah, uh, Phil. Uh, uh, Sally Field and Thomas Hayden Church actually turned down uh, this movie. No shit. Did not know yeah. that. Sally Field said, and I quote... Uh, I don't want to fuck that much for that much on camera. <laughs> Good for her. Wow. All right, are you guys you guys locked in? Locked in. We we Got could it. we could be flirting with a zero here. I might be. High. Brian will go there. I've done it. But I will say, based on Dane Cook's powerhouse theatrical performance, eleven. Oh, lucky 11. Yeah. I'm with you. I also have 11. Wow. So do I. Look at that. Wow. Oh, oh fuck. If I, had a, if I had a better pen situation, but you, oh, my God. There you go. That's 11 right there. Uh, lucky number seven. All right. Dan Cook did have a powerhouse uh, performance. It wasn't quite an 11, though. Good luck. Chuck is rotten. At five. Oh, oh dear God. I'm actually happy about that. <laughs> Ugh, what do you do? What now? That's that's low for Alba. I mean, d you know, Cook ain't known for being some thespian, but Alba, you know, she really set the table pre this movie. So, what what does she do? Does she go? Does she call up the producer of Two Girls One Cup and say, "What do you got for me?" You know, or, or what do you do? What do you I mean, do that's after you do that? that? That's it. That's the game plan. I just wonder how do you pivot as an actress? You know. But well, we can't discuss luck without discussing Adam's favorite pastime, playing the lotto. Mm, yeah. In our next film, a kind-hearted New York City cop has no money to tip his waitress, so he officer offers her half the winnings of his lottery ticket. Amazingly, the ticket ends up being a winner worth $4 million. So true to his word, the cop proceeds to share the big prize until his greedy wife schemes to take the money for herself. The romantic comedy stars Nicolas Cage, Bridget Fonda, and Rosie oh. Perez. From 1994, It Could Happen to You. Remember this one? I mean, vaguely. I remember it existed. existed. <laughs> I, don't I love this movie. This is, because you know, you know how many uh, Cracker Barrels I go to where I, I'll get a little too fucked up and promise the waitresses, like, hey, babe, I'll take care of you, you know, and I'll just say stuff. <laughs> Just to get a little extra ketchup and hash browns, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> ketchup and hash browns. But but they uh you know that they, they uh they they want a better life. So every waitress out there, every Waffle House, every IHOP, uh, every Denny's waitress, is not looking to finish their career bringing you moons over my hammy with or without pews. They're looking to take things up a notch and get that law degree. Yeah, I went to a uh, Waffle House in Georgia, like about five miles away from uh, road Atlanta, which is out sort of in the middle of nowhere. And the hardest working person on the planet, and I've worked construction for many, many years, is the waitress at the Waffle House, man. Because she's bussing it and slinging it, and everything is like, yep. 
almost free. Yeah. Like if you tip it 100%, she's still not walking out of there with more than 30 bucks. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> it is fucking brutal. And they're always haggard and beleaguered. Yeah. And it's not like the fresh face gals no. got, you know, taking a couple of units into junior college. It is flow, <laughs> middle age. You know, circles under the eyes. She calls you hun, but she's frowning. Thrice divorced, and she's like <laughs> going back. Panda. Yeah, I mean, there is no more on your feet work yeah. spattering coming off the grill. You know, making what they waitresses there they make two dollars and forty cents yeah. an hour, and then it's go. But it's like the conceit is like, look, if you work at the Morton Steakhouse and you're a hottie waitress, you'll get two dollars and forty cents. Uh, an hour, but you get an eighty-five dollar tip from the Middle Eastern guys who drop the you know seven hundred and forty bucks over there. This is two dollars and forty-five cents an hour, and the tip is three dollars and eleven cents from the white trash mullet trucker guy who got the Denver omelet with his uh, with his girlfriend. Yeah. It's brutal that amount of work. Yeah, that movie really made every waitress hope and think that a Nick Cage walking in. Uh, was going to be their destiny. Now, if you don't mind real quick, I've actually got a clip of when I interviewed Nick Cage on the Dr. Phil show uh, when this movie came out, and I asked him if he enjoyed making uh, It Could Happen to You. So I want to play that clip real quick here. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Wow, that was a great moment in, in Doctor Phil history. That was one of those. Hell of a sound bite. I remember that episode. Yeah. I was glued well, to the sweet, TV. Sweet, Adam. Mm. Yeah. I always wonder. I always wonder where that drop came from. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're we're in the championship rounds here. We got a close game. This could have been, you know, this could be a sixty-eight type thing, or, or down into. I don't think it got into the thirties. It could be low into the. The 40s, people were sort of a little easier on films back then. Yeah. We didn't have it out for Nick Cage. Right. You know, he wasn't he wasn't the ghost writer Nick Cage. And wasn't this the time where like every movie was named after a fortune cookie? Like it could happen to you. And as it was good as kind it of gets. serendipity. Yeah, it was right. kind of like fun and love and all that. Yeah. All right. Are we uh, okay. we locked yeah. in here? Yeah. Two in the pink, one in the stink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, the fortune cookie. I say uh barely rotten at fifty-seven. I have 44. Ooh. That's exactly what I have, 44. Yeah, I'm going, uh, I'm going, uh, you know, uh, Larry Bird on this. I'm going a hard 33, which is, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the, uh, my high in, uh, in Donkey Kong. No, not mean to brag. I know a lot of girls just started playing with themselves, but I think 33 is about where this movie lands because Cage is the shit and Fonda was on the upswing. All right. But not enough. Mm-hmm. Well, a while back, you might remember that Bald Brian came up with a strategy for the Rotten Tomatoes game that if oh, Adam okay. says a number uh, at the top, just go with that oh, number. That's right. Adam said it could be 68. Wow. That'd be well, crazy. it's not, but it's fresh at 71. Oh, what? wow. I cry foul. They like this one, and the people have it at 54. Shit. The people have spoke? Yeah. Wow. Things just got interesting, Shit. gentlemen. Wow. Well, finally, we're doubling down on the St. Patrick's theme to bring you this story of a vengeful, murderous leprechaun who believes a family has stolen his pot of gold. Brad Williams? (laughs) Originally intended to be a straight horror film, the actors began injecting humor into the ridiculous plot, and reshoots were later added to pump up the campy gore. Film stars Warwick Davis... And it's actually the film's debut of Friends superstar Jennifer Aniston from 1993, Leprechaun. So this is the this is the first one. Because at some point he goes to space. Yes, I mean, Jesus much like Fast Christ. and the Furious. I don't know. I may have to turn to the crowd on this one. What are you guys thinking? I mean, it's got to be low. You can't crowd source your your guess. It was hey, what is this, Slumdog Millionaire. It was well, let me campy. Source my phone. Does it, it get any hipster cred? Did, did anybody see this film? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you did? Terrifying. Terrifying? I was seven. It is weird that, like, all... When I was growing up, all the things you were supposed to be scared of when I was younger was either 
a miniature leprechaun or the old lady getting out of the bathtub, right, yes. all decrepit. Yes. By the way, if uh, that's like in The Shining. The old lady, yes. what, in the oh, shower in the in bathtub? The shower. Just leave her in there for 10 minutes. She'll slip and break her hip. <laughs> or it's the little girl with her dolly. La, 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 la. And we're all like, oh, shit, they're in the house. I think or, I could or kick... The, uh, or I the could, guy in the McDonald's... Oh, yeah. Or, I could or kick... The, go ahead, Phil. Or the, guy, or the guy in the stall at McDonald's when you're at the urinal and he's like, hey, can you come here for a second? Yes. <laughs> But I'm saying the old lady, I could, I could snap like kindling. Right. The, the little girl, oh, I could kick the shit there. out of. Yeah. They got a dwarf wearing high heels with a buckle on them and leprechaun shoes. I could beat the shit out of that. The real, but it's funny. Who you wouldn't want as the ghost in your house would be the gay longshoreman. Hmm. Who's got a... Do tell. Well, he's got a score to settle. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, that's not, you know, it's also got mad MMA skills. Like, that isn't the guy. Right. But the, the scariest were the people that wouldn't be scary in real life. Absolutely. That's all I'm saying. I would say you should be scary of the old lady in the library in Ghostbusters, but I don't think there's any fear of you going into a library. No. <laughs> that's where they I keep mean, the all, books. That's yeah. right. Now, real quick, <laughs> real quick, what would you do if you saw uh, this little guy creeping through? Because... You know, look, I, I'm, I'll be uh, honest, you know, I, I've, my dating past was a little uh, murky, and I definitely, this is triggering me as far as girls that I let sleep over that would, uh, you know, I said, hey, if you don't mind sleeping in the other room, I, I snore a lot, and I, and I sometimes have wet dreams and that I'm uh, ashamed of, and I don't want anyone to be around for the cleanup, so they'll come in about 7 a.m., just like this guy's doing, and go, is it cool if I make myself a bagel? And, uh, and so... So when I see the leprechaun doing that, I imagine him saying, is it cool if I make a bagel? And is your cream cheese uh, uh, expired or should I order some on Postmates? And by that time, I've already called her an Uber. But, you know, she's, you know, I do think that there's something to be said about the poster setting the film up for success. Yeah. All right. So this is it. I may have a very small lead. I have lost the lead in the last question on many times, especially live. My, my batting average live is, is horrible. Brian seems to clutch victory from the jaws of defeat. This is campy enough that maybe you know. it was just kind of fun and they gave it some camp points and got us into the 40s somewhere. Or is it just a flat-out leprechaun abortion into the single digits? That's I think the, I saw... <laughs> I think I saw Leprechaun Abortion open up for Third Eye Blind last summer. <laughs> you guys rock. All right, you guys locked in? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say 15. 17. 13. God damn it, my pen's not fucking working. I know there's a world where this gets campy points and like is like ironically 67%, but I got I think it's I think it's done. I wrote down 22. I don't know if you can see it on there, but 22. Well take your word for it, Phil. I don't I don't lie over Zoom. No, I know. I get you. It's in person where you have to be careful. For sure. <laughs> Leprechaun is rotten. Mm -hmm. Kill you. At twenty-seven. Oh. Suck it. Suck it. <laughs> Circle gets a square. All right, it's close. This is the closest I've ever been. Man. Uh, yeah, Dr. Phil is in this one. This turn in the hat backwards at the La Quinta Inn is uh, truly working out for me. Ooh. Hey, shout out to Over Park, over over oversized overalls park, Texas, or Kansas City, <laughs> wherever the fuck I'm from. <laughs> No, Dr. Phil, what you did with your hat is like what Wahlberg does as a sniper. You right. know what I mean? When yeah. the hat turns backwards, time to take the safety off. Well, that or Sylvester Stallone and over the top. Yeah, and over the top. Also yeah, that's he right. Pokes that that's right. backwards. Thank you. All right, or Dawson. When Arnold, or, or when Arnold popped off his rubber before him and the maid, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll be right back. Well, this is the best game played uh, amongst four of you at a live show with a celebrity Hold guest. on. Delayed joke about Arnold. What you talk about, Phyllis? All right. <laughs> oh, did this now do, we can oh, continue. We so worth it. I'll do it. I can edit it in and post, or I can say it again. Well, what I was saying, basically, Dawson, was that 
It, the turn of the hat around is also like when Arnold popped the rubber off before him and the maid uh, got down and dirty to the soundtrack from Encanto. Before you. Yeah. Oh. yeah. All right, Dawson. All right. 17 points Ooh. separates all of you. Woo. Wow. So, very, very good game. Gina Grad. Yeah. Congratulations, you have made the podium. Thank yeah. You. Well, congrats, you. Gina. Yeah. Big deal. Dr. Big deal. Phil. What's up? That was a hell of a showing. <clears throat> and your score of 63 lands you firmly in fourth place. No. Oh, damn. I'll take it. You know what they say about fourth place? It's just behind third and just above fifth, but uh, truly uh, gets you nowhere in life. And, and you should just, you know, go ahead and, and, and do what you were. You know, you're a loser at that point, but it's <laughs> fourth ain't bad. Fourth ain't bad. Paul Bryan coming in with a score of 59. Ooh. That's not good. That's not oh, good. No. Still on the podium, but... Yeah. You are edged out by our top two. No. Adam Carolla and Gina Grad fighting for first was the funk with the ace man. Long enough to come out with a win. Gina Grad, you are only four points away from Adam, but four points higher. Adam with the win. Yeah! Wow. Gina Grad, second place for 50. The streak continues. All right, should we roll into some news some with Hometown? News. A runner up, Gina Grad, here, and maybe a. Dr. Phil, hang out, crack wise. What do we got, Gina Grass? Right. Stick around. Let's stick around. You know, I got nowhere. I got truly nowhere to be except uh, if the uh, look. I got. I don't want to say I know most of the guys who work at Panera in this great nation of ours, but the one here in Salem, Oregon, they keep it open just just past nine o'clock so that I can, uh, you know, uh, basically motorboat some breadsticks. <laughs> and you know, she's worked there for a while. <laughs> But you're going out and doing two shows tonight, right? Like as soon as that's we... right. I'm gonna open up. I'm gonna open up for Adam Ray at the Infinity Room in Salem, and then uh, and then I'll be back at the uh, uh, Comedy Club of KC, uh, July 21st through the 23rd, uh, ripping it up, uh, flipping it up, uh, doing some cartwheels, and and showing everyone the uh, the business. All right, Gina, what do we got? New story. Do it. News with Gina Grad. Breaking viral, weird crime protest politics. Give me news with Gina Grad. Stuff they saw on TMZ. Joe Biden, come on out. Big news with Gina, Gina Grad. The news with Gina Grad. So LA might be the hit and run capital of the US and I think I can actually prove it. An LA TV reporter was doing a story about a hit and run accident and witnessed another hit and run accident in the middle of the report. Wow. KTLA reporter Gene Kang was in South LA, uh, formerly called South Central, uh, doing the story when two cars behind him got into a hit and run. I'm just going to show it to you so you can see this for yourself. So she's doing a you see Uber Street doing a here. Story. Officials say it's one of the most dangerous streets in all of Los Angeles. And now. <laughs> and the dude takes off. The, the, the thing about LA is it's just turned into a fucking Thunderdome. It's like yeah. every yeah. citizen for themselves, you yeah. know? Like, remember, you'd make fun of those guys. Like, you'd hear about the rapper who bought the six wheel truck with the bulletproof glass right. and the air filtration system and the Kevlar in the doors. Yep. Not so funny anymore, that is it? That's a genius. He's driving a fucking truck from Damnation Alley, and he's right. It is a total lawless fucking free-for-all over there. And we basically decided to stop enforcing the law unless you owe the government money, in which case there shall be laws enforced that apply to you. So. That's true. The good news is, is during the hit and run, the dude that ran dropped his license plate. Oh, so really? I'm quite sure they'll grab him at some point. Amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah these, are, I, these yeah. are these things where you, the world's dumbest criminals uh, truly are, are moronic, but I, I, I somewhat side with the speed in which this guy was 
uh, driving with because we've all been there, you know, where you're uh, at the drive through window at M McDonald's and they give you your bag of nuggets before they take your credit card and you just fucking peel out and you go, see you, Cameron, eat a dick. This is not your day to be alive and breathing. <laughs> it is the honor system. I never thought of that. It is a goddamn free-for-all over there. Now, remember, our own Mike August got hit and ran, if that's uh, the tense you use, and he went and drove the guy down, got him out of his car, got him in a headlock by the side of the road. So anyone, anyone thinking about getting good and liquored up tonight and hitting Mike's <laughs> rental car on the way out after the Late Show, he will pursue you and bring your ass to justice. He literally chased down yeah, nobody an illegal. Wants to get there. Yes. Phil. Nobody wants to get their ass beat from a guy in a Hyundai Tucson. <laughs> no, and he will be, he, uh, he's, he's over the moon because Mike, as, as previously discussed, Mike, all rental cars are um, automatic, but Mike treats them like a, he's driving a six-speed Porsche. So... <laughs> If it's on the console, he's just shifting high and low and high and low and in and out. But they're all different. He's not doing anything. Now it's up on the wheel. He's got the paddles. Uh, now, it is, it is a Hyundai Tucson that's making about 141 horsepower, so I'm not sure what the F1-type paddle shifting is doing. But Mike has got a handful of that wheel. Yeah. He's shifting it and shafting and he will come after you if you broadside him. Let it, I'm just putting it out there in case it happens. Yeah, weren't you on the phone for that? No, I was on was the- that another time he beat somebody's ass on the side of the road? Well, no, yeah. that, yeah, that was on the freeway. <laughs> I was talking to Mike on the phone and <laughs> it's so ironic. He goes, uh, I go, where are you going? He goes, I gotta go to the uh, prenatal. Um, so Mike, had a, a, a son that was a preemie, like three, two, three months premature. It was, and uh, it was a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And so before you can bring your child home, you have to learn some basic health care, you know, CPR and that kind of stuff because you're taking home Spanish. a compromised kid, right? So Mike was on his way to get his <laughs> CPR certification for his infant and so he could bring him home and then he was getting off the freeway, and at some point, a crazy person jumped out from the side of the freeway, because it's L.A., and bashed Mike's hood of his car, and Mike just told me, hold on. <laughs> and then he got out, he stopped the car, he got out of the car, on the freeway, middle of the day, on the off-ramp, Glendale, California, got, off, got out of the car, fought the guy in the lane, in front, of, in front of his car, and then got back into the car, now, he wasn't even out of breath. He, he's just carried on with the conversation about getting certified in CPR for his preemie yeah. child. He's a badass. And, it, and in my defense, that was my first time getting my ass kicked on the side of the freeway. But the second time, it was from Mike August, who is the most aggressive uh, gay man who's married I've ever met. <laughs> He will, uh, he will fight you. And now th there's a whole new strata of homeless, which is, it's hard. I was saying to Mike, is this a homeless guy? And he's like, I, I don't know. Like, he was, he's wearing an IZOD shirt with a popped collar. Like, right. he may have just been crazy. Like, there's so much homeless. There's a stratus of homeless. There's like, a hierarchy. When I grew up, homeless was like the guy with the, the three-day shadow and the and a he had bindle stick. the bindle yeah, the stick and a hole in the front of his shoe and he dressed up like a sad clown. Yeah, I love it. Had a load in his pants. Now people are like wearing designer jeans yeah. and they're fucking on meth and I, I don't know they're wearing you know New Balance shoes I don't know if they're actually homeless or just crazy and on the street and they all have iPhones not galaxies right. iPhones that's right that's right that's right uh, yeah, yeah nowadays oh sorry well I'm just saying nowadays the homeless guys are all on Instagram and Twitch but back in the heyday you know the currency wasn't money it was boogers and cum you know yeah so times have changed. <laughs> I'm so glad I stopped the story for the movie. <laughs> so Dis speak speaking of what you just said, Disneyland has a new menu item. I saw, by the way, Boogers and Come do an acoustic set at McCabe's <laughs> last time I was out there in Santa Monica. They're good. They have, go, light, Gordon Lightfoot covers mostly, but, but good. Keeping it real. 
the, the, the sinking of the Andrea Doria? Or? Edmund Fitzgerald. Oh, okay. Please, <laughs> you know, insult me. All right. Well, Disneyland has a new menu item that's splitting the room for a lot of people. It's called Peanut Butter and Jelly Mac. And it's on the menu at uh, their annual Disney California Food and Wine Festival. So the dish is described as peanut butter and jelly macaroni topped with brown sugar streusel and strawberry crackle oh. like Pop Rocks. Mm. It costs eight twenty five. It's served at the Nuts About Cheese booth, but no confirmation if it has cheese in it. The dish has divided Twitter. Some say it looks good, and another guy tweeted that just looking at that picture gave me diarrhea. <laughs> Who's offering this? Disneyland. Disneyland. Indeed. Disneyland has got to get their shit together because last time I was at Disney, I had this revelation, which is, you know, you go to Disney and you see all the fat people from Iowa and Kansas and all these podunk <laughs> fucking shitbox places you never want to be. Oh, shit. I, I thought I was in L.A. For, talking to my rich friends for a second. <laughs> Uh, fuck. Uh, but no, you'd see, you see the fat couple who's, you know, come in on the Southwest flight and staying at the uh, Red Roof Inn. But the last time I was, at, uh, I was at Disney about four or five years ago, the employees were all fat. Oh. And those, yeah. are, well, those are home, those are townies, right. man. And you don't normally see that. You picture a fat Disney employee. I mean, maybe... The one of the bears from the Country Bear Jamboree, like the one who played the cider jug. Right, yeah. That was the fattest Disney employee, right. but he was hollow inside, had chicken wire in him. They yeah. have fat real people person. working there now. What are we doing with food where we cannot, we're in some sort of space race to make ourselves the fattest nation on earth. Like we, every time someone, oh, did you hear what they did with the Snicker bar? They rolled it in, uh, in pancake batter and then um, Guy Fieri blew a load on it and then they, <laughs> they, they dipped it in a, in, in a goose fat, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, it's a fucking Snickers bar. We not fat enough? Right. It wasn't broken, we were. Right. Understood. Right. I don't well, know where Brian and Dr. Phil went, but we'll see. If we can. Oh, you guys there. there. Okay, well, let's go to the other side of the spectrum. We did some hot... Uh... Can you hear? Oh, no. doctor. Okay, we'll That's have to true. reboot. All right, well, I'm going to skip this one because there's some video. Oh, good. Uh, a thief who broke into a freight truck in Denver last week made out with a box. He did not know it was a box of human heads. Oh, right. Um, according to a release from the Denver Police Department, the suspect stole a dolly in a box labeled Exempt Human Specimen. The box was full of human heads meant to be used for medical research. At this point, no arrests have been made. Investigators are working to gather more information. Uh, should somebody listening find the box, please do call the Denver Police Department. Now, first off, that was a Joe Pesci movie from 1997. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, I heard this guy's defense... He said he only had sex with three of the heads. All right. Can you guys hear us? Is the internet working? Oh, boy. Well, it's been they're, fun. They're frozen up. All right. That's uh, number one. Number two, what did they need the heads for? Research, quote, unquote. And, like, they're used by guys who design sunglasses to figure out, like, what stays on the no. best. Or, <laughs> They're used for guys who design fleshlights. Oh, okay. All I'm right. Just kidding. No, I mean you can check that box, like on the like legal zoom, not that I've looked into it. But you can say, like, do you want to be a donor? And if so, do you want to donate for science? Do you want to only donate to other people? And these people said, science me, baby. Yeah, I, I I don't know. Like, are you guys with me? Like, I'm like, I I did the uh, organ donation thing on my on my license. And by the way, if you want people to... I talked to uh, David Crosby about this. Oh. Uh, David Crosby, you know, had a l little liver issue and then got the liver... You know, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, he got a new, he got a new liver right. for himself. And um, he is all about donating the organs, like just volunteering when, yeah. you, when you go to the... And I said to him, why don't we just do a thing where if you do donate and you hit the I will donate my organ at the DMV, you get out of your next moving violation. What, why? Just, I, I feel like you'd go from 
0.2% to 86% yes. of Americans. I'd yes. make that fucking deal. Everyone I know would make that deal. Why not just right. incentivize them to do it? But I have thoughts, which is like, I would like, you know, my corneas to go to a, a, a little blonde girl so she could see again after, after the accident in the lab. But I don't want my head going on a freight train somewhere. Yeah, Maybe yeah, that's me. No, I think it's well, reasonable. And then I'll, yeah, and also, Dr. Phil, I don't know what you feel about your head, but, you know, my head would be recognizable to, like, 7% of the country, yeah. you know? And I don't want people going, look at him, he's funnier now! <laughs> you know, like, talking shit about my head when I can't, you know, defend myself. That's right. Well, anyone that talks shit uh, to the back of my head, like in a movie theater, that's the most... That's when I get my most abuse is like, let's say I go see a matinee of Chocolat, right? Right. And there's some little fat kid with a list behind me whose mom said I'll be right back, you know, because she saw that I was there. And she, that was, that's basically like code for me to go out to the snack machine and pay for her snacks in a sugar daddy type of OnlyFans way. Right. So the kid will, the kid will be left there and then he'll kind of just start throwing little uh, spitballs at me. And, and the back of the head is the, you know, the softest spot to get hit on, but the hardest spot to hit. So when a kid makes direct impact and says, I just sunk your battleship, I turn around and give him a people's elbow. Uh, I don't hit him, I don't make contact, but I just let him smell the tip of my bow and go, there's more in the kitchen waiting for you, sweetheart, if you, uh, if you want to dance with the dead. And you know, I go home and I write things that are more intimidating to say so I'm prepared but I usually just do that and then he backs up you know thank god that internet came back online <laughs> we all would have missed hey, I that story I just, hey I didn't say all my stories were great but if you want to hear the real good ones you can go to my website uh, and, and get all of my all of my stories called filler up the Dr. Phil untold story of stories on and off the stage, uh, including uh, stuff uh, in, in the bedroom and in the shower. <laughs> All right, let's do one more, Gina. Okay. I don't think I like your fucking attitude, Adam. <laughs> no, you're making me laugh, Phil. Sorry. I love you. I love you. Just busting chops. I love you. All right. Well, a sex toy company called Vibio has successfully gotten uh, four of their products approved by the Vegan Society. Mm. They are it's... vegan sex toys. Uh, the company was able to prove that these vibrators do not contain animal products. We're not used on animals. And uh, What about the ones that are shaped like animals, like the rabbit? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> the mongoose. So to be clear, there are other sex toys out there that are vegan, but this one is officially stamped by the Vegan Society. Approval. Mm, yeah, all right. Uh, a little tip if anyone wants to uh, introduce a sex toy into the uh, evening's activities. Uh, it, is, it needs to be sprung on your partner. It cannot be discussed while the sun is shining. That's always a, that's a hard pass. You, you got to get the juices flowing, and then you slide your hand between the mattress and the box springs. And then don't use Duracells. They pack too much a punch. You got to oh. use, use the black the cats or the generic yeah. ones. The Radio Shack. The yeah, CBS like the version thing. of the one that comes with the TV right. remote. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, nothing, <laughs> says, nothing says no thanks better than a dildo in the daylight. <laughs> So many times. So yes, Colin yes. Sang about that on his first album. Yeah, so that that is the way to to do to integrate it into the into the lovemaking. But again, don't try to document it. Don't draft up uh, any legal paper or anything. <laughs> no, don't no get worry. a verbal. Right. Don't just just get it out. Get about halfway in. You know what I mean? It's yeah. sort of. It's like. It's basically the same thing you do with dessert when you go out to eat, you know, your wife or your partner or whatever. You know, when you're walking to the restaurant, you go, oh, this place has amazing German yeah. chocolate cake. And I go, I'm really, I'm really kind of counting my, whatever. Get halfway into the yeah. meal, get a couple martinis in yeah. her, and then just order it at right. the end, and it'll fucking show up, and she'll bury her cunt <laughs> right into it. Oh. Or whatever the metaphor That's is. That's called splotching. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, all right, let's bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina. That is the news with Gina Grad.
All right, I want to give Adam Ray a plug. Not only is he going to be back here in July on the 21st, I believe, through the 23rd, but uh, Young Rock premieres uh, this Tuesday. Tonight, as you hear this on NBC, you're uh, Vince McMahon in that. I'm Vince McMahon, and I'm playing Jay Leno on Pam and Tommy on Hulu. Oh, that's Go right. That yes, so good. Yeah, we just watched that. AdamRayComedy.com. And a bit of due to Ball Brian and Gina Grant. We'll bring up the ball puller up here, which is uh, yes. Brian with a Y. That's uh, our ball puller, Brian. He's a uh, door. Const- he's got a door construction company. Was a police dispatcher. Has worked in uh, insurance. God, this guy sounds boring. Where is he? <laughs> you. Uh, he works for. A door construction company. Where is... Uh, oh, right behind me. Hey, man, thanks for getting the T-shirt. Have a seat over there. Uh, pull up the mic and speak clearly into it with, uh, with conviction. So, uh, Brian, you, where are you working right now? You doing doors? Yeah, it's uh, DH Pace. Do you, uh, do you install them? Do you manufacture them? Uh, I'm a project manager. I do uh, locksmithing type work. Oh, you do? Well, we can talk. Are you swinging doors? No, it's mostly the uh, locks that actually go in the doors, so they're keyed a certain way. Uh Uh-huh. So are we talking about pocket-type hardware, or are we talking about the two-and-a-quarter, you know, whole saw style? Two-and-three-quarter-inch back set, cylindrical. Yeah, but the hole is two-and-a-quarter, right? Two-and-three-eighths. Two-and-three-quarter, typically. Not the hole. Not not the bore. (laughs) Not, or we'll have it out. Listen, the back set could be two and three quarter, but there's also a version that's two and a quarter, I think, on the back set. But the actual bore, the whole saw bore for the deadbolt or the whatever, I think is two and three eighths, not two and three quarter. That's too big. Technically, yes. Technically, yes. <laughs> Factually, you're wrong. <laughs> Now, I haven't even done this shit in a long time. And then uh, the hole you drill for the strike is like uh, 13 sixteenths or 7 eighths or that is uh, something like that, right? So I, I'm the desk guy. Oh, okay. He's, he's riding a desk. He's in the rear with the gear. He's not up front with us duking it out. <laughs> One inch? Yeah, it can be a little... Uh, one inch? It could be like a... Fi- 13 16 or something, some version of that. Anyway, all right, let's not get mired in this. You want to pull some uh, pull some balls over there? Yeah, scoot your scoot your uh, stool over there, or just stand up and do it. Whatever, whatever you want. Turn it uh, clockwise. Yeah, and whatever comes out, we'll do the bit on that. Mars. Mars. <laughs> I don't know anything about Mars. I know we're trying to move to Mars. I've been talking about this for a long time. Colonizing Mars. I I do want to say this, though. Maybe we're doing too much talking about colonizing other planets. You know what I mean? And I'll tell you why I don't like it. Now, you know my theory. The richest guys on, on the planet, Elon and Bezos and Branson, they're all trying to get the fuck off this planet, and I think they know something. And uh, maybe they, look, don't tell me that Elon Musk doesn't have information that we don't have. You, You don't think he knows a couple of guys who are close to Putin, you know what I mean? Or uh, whoever's running China. Like, you don't think he hears uh, little flies on the wall talking about ballistic missiles and shit like that? I think they know what's up. I think they're trying to colonize uh, Mars. And I don't like it. And the reason I don't like it is, you know, when you're driving your car and you try to take care of your car and you like your car and, you, you know, you're keeping up with it, you're changing the oil you're inflating the tires, you're washing it, and at some point you think to yourself, I'm going to get a new car. And the first thing that happens is you go, fuck this old car. I'm going to start eating fast food in it. I'm not going to wipe it down anymore. I'm going to fuck the babysitter in the back seat. 
pull out. Like, you just go, fuck this. Now I'm treating it like a rental car. So you're already looking at your new car. So a lot of us do that in relationships as well. You're looking down the road a little, and you go, fuck, I'm not going to take care of the current car. I think the more we talk about colonizing Mars, the more we abuse our rental planet known as Earth. Like, why bother recycling? Why bother getting clean forms of energy? Why bother, you know, fuck it, I'm just going to throw the McDonald's wrapper out the window on the highway. We're done with this planet. I'm going to Mars, bitch. <laughs> Let's not talk about... And, and, and then it's a lot of feasibility, too. You know, there's a lot of like, um, well, you know, we go to Mars and uh, we can all live there in harmony. And then people are like, yeah, I'm kind of over this planet. Fuck it, I'm done pitching in. I was going to go, uh, you know, pressure wash some graffiti down in the alley, but fuck it. I'm just going to watch TV and beat off and call it a life. <laughs> but I do want to say this. And I have yelled about this before, so if you're listening, forgive me. But if, in fact, we colonize Mars, um, I would like the job of working the door. You know, I want to be the black guy who played a little ball in junior college and is wearing a turtleneck and may be fat, but don't call him fat. He's going to fucking kick your ass. And I'll be standing there with my black turtleneck, my black blazer, with my clicker, and I'll just be standing there. And there's going to be a little vetting process. Like people that are coming in, like, hey, I'd like to uh, come and join the colony. Okay, uh, tell me your feelings about the Me Too movement. Tell me your feelings about Black Lives Matter. Tell me your feelings about defunding the police. I need to get a little gestalt. I want to know if you're vegan, if you're vegetarian. Basically, what I'm looking to do is not fuck up the new planet. <laughs> if you're talking about wanting to restore your foreskin or about how meat is murder, get the fuck out. <laughs> you fucked up the last planet, you retard. I had to fucking listen to you idiots all day. You ever had, uh, you ever been the uh, victim of a microaggression? Well, actually, get the fuck out in outer space. Get out of here. Are you transitioning? Get the fuck out. I don't want to spend three quarters of my waking life talking about your bullshit anymore. Just, we're only going to have normal, sane fucking folks who want to come here and get the fuck along. I don't want to talk about everything anymore. And I don't want you representing any community. I don't want anything. It's the one community. It's called fucking Mars. Now fucking enjoy it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thank you. You got another ball there, Brian? Brian? Ball, Brian? <laughs> Pogi or Poggy? Pogi? <clears throat> is pogi a food? Filipino word. Filipino word. Yeah, so says the Filipino guy. <clears throat> I would let you into my Mars colony with some extra questioning, obviously. And there's a little, you know, higher bar for certain ethnicities, which is, you know, it's, 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 I, I actually flip the laminate over and we'd find your nationality. We'd have to ask a couple of questions, but it seems like you'd make it in. No guarantees. <laughs> Yeah, pogi means uh, handsome, right? Because in Filipino, because I worked with a guy named Pogi when I worked for uh, Always Better Closets, ABC Closets. So I worked for A&B Carpet Cleaning, and then later on I parlayed that into the fast-paced, lucrative world of installing custom closets at ABC Closets. And I worked with uh, born-again gangbangers, just dudes who stabbed someone, went to prison, found Jesus Christ, and now we're with me in Burbank, California, <laughs> installing closets with zero sense of humor. <laughs> and a couple of stories. So Pogi was this little uh, cute Filipino guy, and we just called him Pogi, but no one knew what a fucking Pogi was, and I thought that was nice. And at some point, after about six months of working with him, I said to him, what's Pogi mean? And he's like, it's Filipino. Nickname. I go, what's it mean? He goes, handsome. I'm like, that's fucking obnoxious. You, 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 you answer to handsome. That's what he answered to. But 
at some point, I remember he was pushing a piece of hardwood. It was red oak through a Makita portable table saw, and the thing bit and kicked back and mashed him right in the face. And I was like, not so pokey anymore, are we, bitch? So the Lord has a way of sort of settling things cosmically. Also, uh, a story I've told a couple of dozen times, but it does remind me. I was, uh, I was going through a hard time in my life. I, my girlfriend, my first girlfriend, dumped me. I had no money. I was making uh, 10 bucks an hour at ABC Closets, and fucking this shit just wasn't working. There was no comedy. There was no money. I was, my girlfriend broke my heart, and I was just depressed as shit and I'd have to go out and install closets with these born again guys they're all born again Christians at Bibles they would ask for traveling mercy before we got in the cube truck <laughs> and went to like our lead and install the custom closet and I was so miserable I would always sleep in the back of the cube truck so I'd make a bed out of furniture pads you know <laughs> and I'd just make myself a little nest and sleep back there and we'd get to the job and we'd have to get to the job but we'd have to listen we'd have to listen to Christian rock. All we did was listen to Christian rock, which actually brings me to a joke I made while we were barbecuing today that Mike August said. Mike, uh, oh God, I got to think of my joke. So Mike August, we're eating. I'll get back to my Christian rock story. And uh, he said, uh, he said, uh, he said, there's Christian rock. He goes, is there Christian rap? And I was like, I don't know, Mike. I, I've never really heard it. And he goes, there's got to be Christian rap. And then he put me on the spot. He looked at me and he goes, if you did Christian rap, what would be your Christian rap name? <laughs> and I said, Old Dirty Testament. <laughs> and then Mike goes, that's good. You should use that. And I go, I can fucking use it. It's my joke, you asshole. <laughs> And then I told him I wasn't going to use it, but here we are, four hours later. So, um, we're playing, we're, we're, we're installing closets, and all we could listen to is Christian rock, you know? And I was, like, so depressed, and I was like, fuck, I hate working with these guys. And at a certain point, I just said to him, look, can we just turn it on KLOS like a, like a rock station? Because I worked on construction sites. You listen to rock, you know, classic rock. And uh, they're like, nah, that's kind of against, you know, our, 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 our teachings and everything. And I went, just, just, just put it on KLOS once. Maybe it'll be a good Boston song or Kansas or something. We can listen to some real professional music. And they were like, they had to like have a break off into a discussion group, you know, and I was like, come on. <laughs> and they're like, all right, we can try it once and we'll see how it works. And I was like, all right, th this is going to be good. You guys will like this. It's classic rock. It's some of the greatest musicians ever. You're going to love this. And I turn on there, and it's, uh, so it's Bob Seger doing Main Street. And I'm like, oh, look, see, look, this is nice. He's, he's going down to Main Street. He's a, you know, he's a lonely guy, and He's met a pretty young lady who works there on the, on the street, and she, she fills, his, fills his nights with dreams, and, and they're like, he's singing about a whore. And I was like, no, he's just going down to Main Street to meet his girlfriend who works on the sidewalk over there, you know? No, no, listen, and I was like, oh yeah, he's, he's trying to fuck a whore. Okay, we'll, we'll put it back to Striper now or whatever the fuck you are. That was it. I had one shot at classic rock and fucking the, uh, the, the silver bullet Bob Seger fucked my shit up and that, that was it. It could have been a Beatles song. We could have enjoyed it, but now it was Bob Seger's Main Street. Sorry, what were we talking about? Pogey? Yeah. Pogey. Pogey. Pogey is uh, handsome Phil Painter. Yeah, all right. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Steamboat. Steamboat. Uh, it's funny we're just talking about this on the podcast. Is, 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 by the way, is that a sexual move? Is it? I don't know. Is everything a sexual move now? If it is, my oh, motorboating. Yeah. So, oh, motorboating's a move. Well, st uh, st 
steamboating is uh, what you do on a hot day. <laughs> you know, it's like when you put your face between two big titties and go, and, and, and the thermometer says more than 89 outside, then it becomes uh, steamboating. Um, I know you guys have steamboats out here, but they don't go anywhere because they don't have an engine. They just look like a big paddle boat, right? So you can go gamble legally. Is that what's going on here? So you essentially build a boat, but it's on a concrete slab, and then you guys walk across. How far? I've not been to one of these casinos. I, it's such a weird thing. We used to, in L.A., there used to be a barge for gambling in L.A. Do you guys know that? Like back, I don't know, Chris, look it up. Like back in the 20s, they parked a big barge like 26 miles off the coast of Santa Monica because it'd be international waters. And then they would take you back and forth and people would go there in the like 20s and 30s and gamble. So we have this thing which is like, Lottery, that's legal. Betting on sports wasn't legal. Now it's kind of legal. Uh, you can gamble here in your state, but not while you're standing on terra firma. You have to stand in a swamp, and then you can do it. And where I'm from, we have Indian casinos because there's something noble about a buffet and slot machines that would have made the elders proud. I like... It's insane. Look, either gambling is good or it's bad. Just fucking make it legal. Why are we jumping through these hoops? You know what's crazy? It is crazy what we do. We act as human beings like we have some sort of evil alien overlords controlling us. And they're like, well, they're fucking with us. They're tormenting us. So we couldn't just build a casino on the ground, but they will let us gamble if we put it on Robert Fulton's prototype and push it out into the fucking swamp. And then we all walk out there. Robert Fulton was a deep, deep dive there, but he did invent, he invented the steamboat. I'm just saying, is gambling good or bad? And the answer is, it's good if it's on a boat. It's bad if you're on fucking land. It's good if you're standing amongst the, uh, on an Indian burial ground. It's bad if you're not. What the fuck are we doing? It's so random and bizarre. I hope, I hope future civilizations look at us and label us retarded. <laughs> if, in fact, they're allowed to use that word. Do you have the answer, Chris? There's a giant barge... They would put it, at, was it 23 miles, 26 miles? It was, it was three miles offshore of Santa Monica, and they, oh. would, they would taxi you out there. Of course, the state didn't like it. So uh, eventually the state won. They seized the boat, ended up having it battle in World War II, and it was uh, taken over by Germany and then later sunk by Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Who sunk it? <laughs> wow. It was, so it was this captured by a German submarine and then sunk near Africa. This boat, by the way, uh, I know it was desperate times and we needed to, you know, commission all these boats, you know, like it was Dunkirk, but this thing is just a big barge with roulette wheels in the middle of it. Like, did we need ships that fucking badly? So this thing actually entered a world war and then was sunk by a U-boat. That's right. It was called the Rex. Is that, and that was World War II it was sunk, obviously, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah it, okay. was, it was operating around 1928. <clears throat> How, uh, you know, it's got to be weird. <laughs> I picture the German U-boat captain, like, trying to brag to people about his kills, and then the other German U-boat captain who knows he sunk a gambling barge made of wood, <laughs> and he's probably leaning in going, I know you think it's an American destroyer. He sunk a fucking gambling barge. Don't listen to his ass. Anyone could have done that. Sorry, let's do one more. What do we got there? Wait, what was that last one? Steamboat. Steamboat, there it is. This one says taint. Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys, what the hell? Get your minds out of the gutter. All right, taint, no big thing. I'll do that one for you guys. <laughs> The taint is the space between the ass and the nutsack, right? 
Now, we've had a, a, a vigorous debate as to whether women have a taint. I do not know if women have a taint. Do you think women have a taint? No. Uh, it's 2022, people. Don't you think women should have taints? <laughs> Look, I don't believe they should be allowed to vote, but they should at least get a taint. That would be the platform I would run on. You ladies have come a long way. The taint is, uh, I do believe the taint is where, when I used to do Love Line a million years ago, there was a thing, and I don't, I don't know if anyone does this anymore, but uh, for the fellas, right before you ejaculated, you'd push up on the taint and nothing would come out. Do you guys know that? Have you heard about that? Enjoy your nachos, by the way. If in, I don't know, you didn't want to get someone pregnant or you didn't want to make a mess or, or whatever it is, you would push up on the taint. It, and by the way, that seems like a lot for me when it comes to the <laughs> orgasm. And plus, I couldn't do it. One hand's got a beer, the other hand's got the remote. What am I going to do? Set some shit down before I orgasm every time? Every time. <laughs> but it would essentially push up on the taint, which turned your cock into a smokeless cigarette. And that's all I got on the taint. Put your hands together for Brian over here. And keep it going for Adam Ray. And Bald Brian and Gina Grad. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla saying mahalo. And they were going there to see Crystal Gale. And she canceled earlier today. This is a white dude who's in his early 50s who's going to see Crystal Gale. This is on him, right? I don't know. <laughs>